Hi, I'm Craig Tumler from Startup Stories, and I'm here with Andrew uh, Sutton from uh, Sutton Recruitment, yeah. um, and we'll be talking about his startup story. Um, now, Andrew, can you tell me a little bit, like, uh, you only founded your company a few months ago. Mm -hmm. um, what led you to the point of deciding to do that? Yeah, um, well, I'm in recruitment, and I've been with a couple other recruiters, including Hayes, obviously a big national corp or international corporate. Um, probably three reasons sort of thought about making the move. One is I hit 10 years with the company. Two, I hit 50 years old. And three, a couple of things, a couple of decisions that were made that I disagreed with that probably helped add to the, the mind change of mm -hmm. um, going out on my own and having a bit more uh, flexibility, autonomy uh, yep. to make my own decisions. Okay, great. Is this the first time you've run your own company? Absolutely, yeah. Great. So it must be quite a big step. Yeah, it was. I'm a fairly conservative person. I'm an accountant by training, so we tend to be fairly conservative. But uh, I think it just got to a point that something had to change in my career and I wanted to take on a new challenge. And I had some friends who had done similar step outs of big corporates. And uh, I thought, well, if they can do it, why can't I? Okay, so, so, so what challenges have you sort of uh, found so far or, or, or seen so far? Yeah, I think the biggest challenge is just knowing where to start when you're setting up a small business. Um, mm -hmm. What do you need to actually think about? Who do you go to and so on? And I think certainly in that respect, I've been very fortunate that uh, I've had some very generous people that have assisted me in providing sort of a, a checklist of things to do, people mm -hmm. to talk to and so on. Um, I, certainly one of the areas that I do struggle with is IT, so mm -hmm. that's that's probably an ongoing challenge. But uh, again, it, there's plenty of people out there that support small business. Um, so it's a matter of just tapping into those networks. Yeah, because very much when you're running your own small business, you have to do everything. You have to do everything. Yeah, yes. so that can be quite hard when you come out of an organisation because they always have people who you know, look after the things behind the scenes. Yeah, very much so. I mean, coming from a, a big company like I did, they had IT support, they had marketing support, obviously the finances were all taken care of, systems upgrades and management was all done for you and basically you just had to come in and do, do your job. Mm. And um, so coming to grips with all those aspects of the business has certainly been a, a, a big challenge, big learning curve, but uh, nothing that's insurmountable. Yeah, did you have a bit of a run up before starting your business? So. Um, you know, when did you actually make the decision to step out versus when you actually started? Yeah, uh, I finished up with my previous employer in late August last year. Mm -hmm. I did have a six month uh, restraint that, or well, four months from setting up a company and then six months from contacting clients. Uh, so yeah, I've had a, I had a good break, but yeah, I had a, a, a long run in where I was able to take my time to take the steps slowly but steadily, make sure that everything was was set up as as best I could by the time I started getting on the phone and con reconnecting with my, my old clients and candidates and obviously new ones. Great. Well, that, that sounds like a good thing because, you know, if you don't have that run-up, you, you step out of a company and you say, right, I'm going to set up my own business. Mm. Doing it the next day can be tough. Oh, I would hate to imagine how you'd, you'd do that. I yeah. Think you'd, you do need a number of months. I mean, I took six, but a lot of that was doing sort of personal stuff and yeah. other other activities so I could spread it out. But uh, I would have thought a good two to three months would be an absolute minimum. Yeah, so normally I ask people um, what they would have done differently from what they've done so far. Now, you haven't had a lot of time in your business, mm. but is there already anything that you've seen that you know would have maybe changed what you did or when you did it or whether you do this three or four years ago? Um, Probably in hindsight whether I would have jumped earlier, uh, knowing that it, it isn't insurmountable or it isn't such a big step. Um, to be honest you, you're right, it's been a short period of time and, and the reception I've got has been very, very positive and highly encouraging. Um, so I, no, there's probably nothing I'd change so far, but mm -hmm. I suspect, give me, ask that question again in six months, <laughs> there, there may well be a different answer. Yeah, well, and, and one of the things also is, is there can be a, a, a lot of um, concern when people are jumping from secure traditional employment into running their own business. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, did, did you feel any of that and how did you sort of overcome it if you did? Um, financially, I was in a good position. Mm -hmm. um, 
Uh, I've um, been very fortunate to have a, a, a mother who's got some uh, able to, to provide support that way, that keeps the household ticking over while I'm not earning any income. Um, so if I, if I didn't have that, certainly financially, it would have been far more tenuous. Mm -hmm. um, so I think certainly having that backing and not having to rely on further finances is also somewhat uh, comforting. So mm -hmm. uh, um, if that answers the question, I think, um, yeah, it's been, it's been a, a pretty smooth ride from that aspect. Yeah, well, having, having some security around, you know, at least finances is, mm. is, can be the make or break for a lot of small businesses, I think. Yeah, being an accountant I'm, and having worked as a financial controller in a couple of organisations, uh, I'm critically aware that organisations that don't have the capital to back themselves um, often start off in a, a flying rush, then they either nosedive or they grow so quickly that they don't have the, the funding behind them, I think. Uh, so in my case, the investment in the in the startup has has been re relatively small. I'm mm -hmm. operating out of home, so I don't have to worry about uh, rents and so on and so forth. So I think my industry allows me to get started up without a significant setup cost. Yeah, a lot of flexibility in in, mm. in how you go about it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, so. Um, what would you advise other people who are thinking of stepping out of employment, setting up their own business? Um, certainly be an expert or have a specific niche that differentiates yourself from the market. I think mm -hmm. that that's critical and um, I mean Canberra is a very government related city. Um, funnily enough, I don't actually do a lot of work with government. Yes. Um, so I've created a niche in, in the non-government sector. Mm -hmm. and. Um, Certainly when I did my research going out, I was talking to a lot of people that are confident, if you like, how comfortable would they be supporting me as, as Andrew Sutton recruitment or Sutton recruitment as opposed to Hayes. And uh, overwhelmingly the, the support was there. Mm -hmm. And certainly that's so far being fulfilled. So certainly having a niche uh, in the marketplace, being an expert in the marketplace um, and having comfort that when you are able to open your doors, that you will, in my case, I've, I have supply and demand of the candidates and the clients. In a lot of organisations, it might just be the supply or the demand. Okay. Um, I've got I've got both, and uh, as has been proven the case, the, the take up's been very, um, very, very encouraging. No, that's that's great because you know if you can get that early cash flow and you've got those early connections and you start building the business, mm. it makes a big difference three or four years on. Yeah. Just have no a cash solid flow. start. Yeah. Well, cash flow comes, yet, I think, but, it, but that's all right. It's close, and um, and I mean, it, it, there's got to be a lead time, and you've got to you've got to yes. factor that in, not only from the day you open the door, but how long is it going to take you? In my case, for the first sale, or is it till you get uh, a sales level that's sufficient to help you carry on the lifestyle that you've become accustomed to? Yes. Um, so what is uh, something that you've actually learnt through setting up the business that you may not have realised before you got it together? Uh, it's probably just having people that can support you in providing all the, the back-end parts of the business. Mm -hmm. You can't do them all, and you can't do no. them all, or you can, but you can do them very badly. Yes. And I think you've got to be prepared to invest in securing the right suppliers to help you, people that are at your level or understand or work with clients similar to yourself. Um, I spoke to a couple of marketing people, Look, they, were, they were both great, but I felt one was probably geared to a bigger organisation, similarly in IT, I, I just felt that they were geared to medium businesses mm -hmm. rather than myself. So it's having an awareness of picking your suppliers that, that suit what you're trying to do. Um, has been really important and, and certainly that's proven to be very effective in, in the back end um, and getting that all up, up and running. Yeah, and I think a lot of um, small businesses do occasionally run into the issue of trying to do everything themselves and some things they do do badly because they're not specialists and yeah. doing things badly can just add, add to the problem. You well, know, it's, really. uh, I'm trying to think of the economic term, but you're spending time away from your expertise yes uh, and the cost of that is going to be far greater than you not focusing on what your business is about um, and, and getting out and doing what you're an expert in so 
I'm an accountant, I'm, I'm fairly con safe with money, um, but I've recognised that I do need to spend money to get it done right and to yeah. get it done in, a, in, a, in an efficient way. Yeah, well, quickly enough so that your business doesn't go under while you're trying to get something finished. Yes. Absolutely, yeah, and that's, uh, uh, I think the other thing that probably answers the question that you asked previously is, is having that checklist and getting a checklist, and that's where yep. I've been fortunate. I had two friends who gave me detailed checklists of what they did to set up a business. Great. And it's pretty extensive, and mm -hmm. it sort of, if you take the time to tick off each of the items, mm. by the time you open the door, you're in a far better shape than sort of, you're like a duck paddling on water, your feet are going in a million that's, miles an hour. That's great. It'd be good to actually get a copy of those checklists. But <laughs> yeah, I'll have to see what, what state they're in. I, I think at, at some point they, uh, they got a bit desecrated, but uh, certainly <laughs> I can see if I can pull that out for you. Yeah, so, um, so what are your plans for the future of the business over the next year, next couple of years? Yeah. Um, at this stage, I have no great ambitions to grow beyond myself. Mm -hmm. um, I recognise that I'm not the best people manager in the world, and that was reflected in my previous business uh, in the line of work that I was doing. Uh, look, if someone good that came along that I was very comfortable with that didn't require management, that say wanted to be a partner in the business, uh, that's certainly something I'd consider. Mm -hmm. I think uh, being a sole trader is difficult in terms of when you want to go on holidays. Yes. You've, you've got to think, well, how do my clients and candidates, in my case, contact me while I'm camping in the Kimberley, for example? Well, how do you keep earning money when you're not in the business? That's right. Yeah, so mm -hmm. there's certainly some, some big challenges. Yeah, so my ambition is, yeah, stay, stay true to myself, mm -hmm. um, stay as a sole trader, um, do a great job for my clients and candidates. Uh, and if, look, if things turn out for the best and I need to expand, Hi. the distractions obviously when the kids and the, the wife comes home. Yes. Um, you sort of step away from work to say hello and catch up on the days, but then you go back to it. Yes. Yeah, and I, I also work from home a great deal. We have an office that's actually a separate structure, so I have a two-minute commute to work, which mm. is lovely, but... Um, there's always a temptation to say, oh, you know, this is a piece of work I don't really want to do. Gee, there's something to clean or there's something to wash or there's yeah. always something to do. Yeah. And um, you do have to have a certain amount of discipline. Um, yeah, definitely. And I think, uh, I mean, I, I reflect on my time working with other corporates and you just realise how much time you lose through things like meetings and, and things like that. There's just so much effective time that you lose. So... Working from home, yes, that you've got to be disciplined. But yeah, look, I might do a couple of hours work, and then I might go out in the garden, mm. um, check out the the veggies, or what, just play with the dogs for a few minutes, just to clear the head. Then you get back into it. Um, so certainly the discipline there. On the flip side, you've got to be careful that you don't just become so absorbed in your work because it's yes just up the hallway. Yes, um, and that you you lose connection with your family. Yes, um, so that. That will probably be an ongoing challenge because when I throw myself into something, I throw myself into it. And, right. Uh, I've probably got a few distractions with clubs that I'm involved in and coaching and so on, but really you've, you've got to get that balance right with family, your, your outside interests and your business. Great. What sort of clients and candidates uh, do you look for or are you looking for? Yeah. From clients, as I said earlier, um, I'm, I'm not necessarily interested in, in doing a lot of work for the big government departments. In fact, I'm not on their panels and I've no intention of going through the rigmarole of, of getting on their panels. Um, it's really anything that's operating in, operating in the non-government sector, whether mm -hmm. it be commercial organisations, uh, whether it be not-for-profits, universities, those sort of organisations, clubs, associations. Um, I will look at um, government business enterprises, state authorities, because they they tend to be smaller and and they engage the the type of candidates that I'll be working with. But mm -hmm. um, the profession's another big area of the the non government sector. In terms of candidates, I'm I'm sitting myself at a at a qualified level, so someone who's at least a degree qualified, probably three years experience upwards uh, in the finance area. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, they might be doing their CA or CPA program and beyond. And I'm also looking at uh, doing some executive recruitment, yep. particularly in the uh, 
not-for-profit industry associations experience where I've uh, done a bit of work in the past. Yeah, that's, that, that can be a tough area to find the right people, particularly in, uh, in Canberra, which is a small market to start with, and mm. you need a lot of incentives to draw people here. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've worked for some really interesting organisations. I mean, uh, uh, Canberra International Airport, I recruited the CFO position and um, we conducted a, a nationwide search, mm. advertising search um, for that particular role. Um, similarly, CEO for the um, RSL, uh, yep. which was obviously a very high profile position. So again, a national search together with a national advertising campaign. Um, so you, you can draw people in with plum positions, yes. but in reality they've got to be fairly well remunerated to encourage someone to uplift potentially their family to come to Canberra. Um, but a lot of it, it, it's moving people around in Canberra. Mm -hmm. um, you'd be surprised just how, how many organisations and candidates there are that fit within that non-government sector. I mean, a lot of people think we're a government town, but in reality, it's it's pretty much fifty fifty. Yes. Um, so, uh, finding candidates in certain areas can be extremely difficult. In others, pop an ad up, you'll get smashed with fifty candidates, mm. and then it's a case of, of doing the the sorting rather than the searching. Yeah, and over the last four or five years, almost all the growth in Canberra has been in the um, you know the commercial not for profit area, not so much in government, which has been more downsizing well, or, or remaining constant yeah and i think it's certainly in my space it the, the pub when the the public sector go through those freezes or or, or re reductions in numbers the private sector does suffer mm -hmm. um, and people tend to be less um, encouraged to move about because of uncertainties uh, so particularly in my space when i'm recruiting for finance people accountants have as i said earlier fairly conservative so they'll sit tight rather than take a risk and go into an organisation they're not as familiar with, just yes. in case that organisation makes that position redundant, mm. uh, whereas they know they're secure in their current employer. Mm. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Andrew. It's it great. was great to get an insight into your business and where you're going, mm. and I wish you all the best for the future. Thank you. Thank it's you. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Greg. Thank you.